Hey guys, welcome back to our lecture, Neat Biology Expert. I'm Dr. Parveen. In this lecture series, we are going to study about the class 12 biology, the next chapter in the first unit that is human reproduction. Human reproduction is a very important chapter, super interesting and super easy. So in this particular lesson, we are going to study about what is human reproduction, a basic introduction and in detail about the male reproductive organ, right? Let's get started. Okay, so in the first unit when we are talking about the reproduction in organisms, do you remember we classified the animals into two broad groups. So one is called oviparous and another is called viviparous. What do you mean by oviparous? oviparous any organisms which lays egg and give birth to young ones is called oviparous right and on the other hand the opposite of this is viviparous viviparous means any organism which give birth to young ones are called viviparous okay so mammals and human beings majority of the animals are viviparous so similarly humans are viviparous why organism should reproduce? Why particularly human should reproduce? Can we live without reproduction? Yes, human can live for a long period of time, almost even you say 85, 90 years without reproduction healthily. But in order to exist the species, reproduction is important in human beings. So if there is no generation, then the human being will not be uh, uh, for example, if uh, if a man gets married and he won't reproduce, the next generation will not be there, right? So reproduction is inevitable for the existence of the species. That's why human reproduction is very important, like it is there in any other organisms. Reproduction, okay, right? So what are the major events in human reproduction? What happens during a human reproduction? How this occurs? That is called events in human reproduction. This we can broadly classify in about nine steps. Okay. So the first one is called gametogenesis. What is gametogenesis? Gametogenesis means formation of gametes. Right. Yes. So in order to proceed or reproduction to occur, sexual reproduction, the first thing is gamete formation. So it could be a male gamete which is the sperm cell or it could be a female gamete an egg cell. So production of the male and female gametes that is sex cells are called gametogenesis. So that is the first step and the second step is insemination. What is insemination? The male gamete should reach the female gamete. Okay. So this uh, reaching process is called insemination okay so the reaching of the male gamete with the female gamete so usually in majority of the organisms sexual method of reproduction if you see uh, the female gamete will be in one place and usually the male gamete used to travel even in the flowers also it is like this okay so male gamete usually travel and reach the female gamete right so similarly, so that process is called insemination, the reaching of the male gamete to the female gamete, the meeting. Next, after they meet, what happens? Fertilization occurs. So what is fertilization? The male gamete and the female gamete. Okay, here sperm cell and the egg cell. So they should unite and they form a zygote. So formation of the zygote is called fertilization. Okay, so union of the two gametes is called fertilization. Fertilization should occur. That is the third step. And fourth step, what is the fourth step? Cleavage. So after fertilization, the zygote should grow and develop into blastocyst. Okay, so zygote will be transformed into another structure called blastocyst. Okay. So how they uh, divide? They divide by mitotic cell division. Mitotic cell division. So zygote has uh, one cell. So we divide into two, two into four, four into eight like this. Blastocytes consist of around 150 to 200 cells. Okay, a mass of cell, a ball of cell that is called blastocyst. So that stage is called cleavage, right? Next one is implantation. 
so what is implantation for example this is the uterus of the female uterus wall of the female okay so the blastocyst should go and implant inside the uterine wall so this stage is called implantation right right the next step is called placentation so what is placentation placenta what is placenta the joining or the connecting cord between the baby and the mother is called placenta okay this placenta will develop so this stage is called placentation or placenta formation and the next one is gastrulation gastrulation means so for example you see here this is a blastocyst the blastocyst will have around 150 to 200 number of cells like this okay so surrounding the cells a triple layered covering will be there the triple layered covering will be there so this is called gastrulation okay so a three layer primary germ cells are produced this is called gastrulation and next one is organogenesis so what happened so this stage is then gets differentiated and each cells each particular cells develops into a particular organ for example cells of the heart becomes the organ heart cells of the spinal cord it becomes the spinal cord like that the differentiated cells they become the particular organ okay so see here here this cell actually this blastocyst uh, stage is called stem cells this is called embryonic stem cells okay these stem cells only get differentiated into different organs okay and so here that organogenesis occurs see here these three steps placentation gastrulation and organogenesis these are together called as gestation these are together called as gestation gestation means pregnancy so during pregnancy period these stages the development of the fetus placentation organogenesis maturation everything occurs okay so this step is called gestation and finally what happens parturition parturition means delivery once the baby develops completely after 10 months so what happens it gets released out from the womb so this stage is called parturition okay so these are the events in the human reproduction these steps are very complicated events this carries many hormonal control and but they are all well programmed steps okay so we are going to study in detail each of these steps in this chapter so here when these steps occurs in a human being these reproductive events they occur after the puberty what is puberty puberty means the reaching the adolescence period okay so you do you remember in our chapter one of the first unit we studied about the stages of life cycle in an organism the first phase is called juvenile phase juvenile phase right and the second phase is called the reproductive phase and the third phase is called the senescence phase right so in this reproductive phase only these events will occur so before that is the childhood juvenile phase during that time it won't occur okay so the reproductive occurs events occurs after the puberty that means in the reproductive age only so that means it starts around in 13 years in a human being for men this gametogenesis sperm production will continue for some people even up to 85 years also that means it is a very continuous process in men okay sperm formation continues even in old men but in female it is not so in female the ovum production it stops around the age of 50 years that means during the menopause time menopause menopause means the stopping period where the menstrual cycle stops that period is called menopause okay till the menopause only the ovum production will be there after that it won't be there that will be usually 50 years in a female but it is just uh, extended time in a male okay right what are the major functions of a reproductive organ so we have male and female reproductive organs 
what are the functions of this organ there are four important functions of a male reproductive or a female reproductive organ the first one they should produce gametes that means sperm cell or the ovum the reproductive organ should produce the gamete gametogenesis that is the first step the second one to transport and sustain these gametes so these gametes not just product producing till it mates the opposite that means till the male gamete reaches and meets the female gamete till the fertilization occurs this gamete should be live sustainable okay so what happens so these reproductive organs they produces many nutritious factors or hormones to transport and sustain these gametes okay that is the second step and third one to nurture their developing offspring this happens in the female reproductive system not in the male male just the gamete production will be there but in the female not so the female reproductive organ carries the babies where the baby grows right so the baby needs nutrition for its growth so everything is provided inside the female reproductive organ so it nurture the developing offspring and these organs produces hormones they are controlled by pituitary gland they produce male and female sex hormones they are responsible for the secondary sexual characteristics that that means like uh, male has beard mustache like this female develop breast so like this many other secondary sexual characters are produced by the help of these hormones so these are the major functions of the reproductive organs so let us see what are the parts anatomy of a human male reproductive system okay so it consists of four major important thing the first one is called a pair of testes testes this is testes okay testes they are present uh, in either side one one so there is a pair of testes and accessory ducts so these are the small small ducts present in the male organ sex organ accessory ducts and glands there are three glands called seminal vesicle prostate and bulbo urethral gland don't worry i will be telling you everything in detail following now okay so glands are there and followed by external genitalia external genitalia means penis and scrotum so like this testes ducts glands external genitalia these are all the structures in a male reproductive system okay so now what we could see the outside is the first one penis and the second one scrotum so this region is called penis and this region is called scrotum only these two structure we could able to see outside in a male reproductive system and baki all structures are present inside internally that we could not able to see by external morphology okay so these are the two external structures right so now we will see the structure in the front view male reproductive organ so what could we see in the front side first we could see the testes these two structures are called testes okay so testes is the primary male sex organ where sperms are produced so this region is called testes followed by testes you have this some structure here this structure is called epididymis epididymis lies on the top of the testes okay and epididymis continues into a long tube called vas deferens this long tube which ends in the next part is called vas deferens okay and the end of the vas deferens we have a bulged area called ampulla this is the bulged area called ampulla and on the sides of the ampulla we have seminal vesicle and in the end of the ampulla we have ejaculatory duct okay and on the outside we could see urinary bladder which is connected with a ureter so let us see the front view of the male reproductive organ in detail okay so the first part here this is the place where the sperms are produced so this region is called testis so the first part is testis right so outside the testis we have a tube this tube is called epididymis this tube is called epididymis this tube epididymis is just elongated gets elongated into a long tube this is called vas deferens 
at the end of the vas deferens in either side this is this is uh, same in either side okay at the end of the vas deferens we have a bulged structure called ampulla this is the fourth part okay and both the ampullas open in a part called ejaculatory duct right on the sides of this we have a gland called seminal vesicle okay now you see here the sperms gets produced in the testes they travel through this ejaculatory uh, sorry uh, vasa difference and it comes through the near the ejaculatory duct okay so in this point where the ejaculatory duct is present there is an another system which connects to the reproductive system that is the urinary tract okay see let us see the structure of a urinary system this is a kidney these are kidneys okay so kidneys we have an out external tube this tube is called ureter ureter and this ends in a bag like structure called urinary bladder and comes out in urethra okay this area see this area is attached here means they get uh, together okay see here this big structure this is the urinary bladder and this is the ureter so what happens in a male reproductive system the urine also enters at this point here and also the semen which is produced in the testes also they reach in this point here okay and they come out through a common opening what comes out both the urine and the semen both comes out through a common opening so this opening is called urethra urethra okay right so this is the basic structure in a male reproductive system so let us see in this picture the comparison picture of both the side view and the frontal view of the male reproductive organ so if you study like this it is very easy for you to understand the different parts in either uh, way so it could be easy for you to name the parts also okay so in the side view this is the testis the testis has an outer covering called scrotum okay so here this is the scrotum the out covering is called scrotum okay and here this is the testis that outside the testis you have on the top of the testis like a cap like structure we have a structure called epididymis so this is the epididymis you could appreciate well this epididymis in this picture okay this epididymis continues into a long tube like structure called vas deferens see here this is the vas deferens this long tube is called vas deferens where this vas deferens ends it ends in a structure bulged structure called ampulla so here this is ampulla okay this is ampulla and then on the sides of the ampulla we have seminal vesicle this pink color structure is called seminal vesicle okay and we have prostate gland and bulbo urethral gland which you could not see or appreciate by the front view okay so that's why we could see the side view here see this area is called the prostate gland and this is called bulbo urethral gland okay i will tell you what are the uses of this glands later right okay and here we have the urinary bladder which stores the urine which is collected uh, here from by the uh, ureter right so here this area is the rectum which is the part of the large intestine end part and this opens in the anus so these are the structure of the male reproductive system okay so let us see the first important organ that is the testis testis is the primary male sex organ so here testis means plural testis t e s t i s testis means singular okay so male has two testes so we call this testis plural so what is testis testis is situated outside the abdominal cavity within a pouch or a sac of skin called scrotum so what is scrotum this outside structure is called scrotum so what is the use of the scrotum this is a bag like structure which carries the testis why it is present because if you see here in the male reproductive structure this area particularly this area they are present outside the body right 
so they are external uh, outside the body so why it is present outside the body because when the gametogenesis occurs when the male sperm cells are produced the favorable temperature for the sperm cells is less than 37 degree okay so what is the human body temperature it is 37 degree centigrade so in this 37 degree centigrade the sperm cells um, do not function well so what happens usually that's why the test is they are located outside the abdominal cavity that means where the temperature is around 2 to 2.5 degrees centigrade less so what is the favorable temperature for sperm production that means better at 35.5 degree or less than 34 degree okay so cooling temperature is important for the sperm production and that's why the scrotum acts as a thermoregulator that's why uh, people used to say we should not uh, keep laptop over our lap uh, male particularly okay because they will affect the sperm production the laptop generates heat which affects the scrotal temperature okay in the adult the testis is oval in shape and the size is 4 to 5 centimeter in length and 2 to 3 centimeter in width next let us see the cross section of a testis how the testis exactly looks like internally so that we are going to uh, study now okay so here this structure is the cross section of a testis so each testis contains about 250 compartments they are called testicular lobules so see here the gray color thing so these are the sections of each compartment this individual sections is called one compartment okay so they are called testicular lobules in each lobule around two to four highly coiled testicular tubules or seminiferous tubules are present so inside each compartment we have tube like structure they are called seminiferous tubules so sperms are produced inside the seminiferal tubules so let us see this picture in which you could appreciate the inside organelles of the testis very well okay so this is a cross section of the testis here see these parts these parts are called compartments these are all the compartments okay so like this about 200 to 250 compartments will be present in a single testis and here you see inside one compartment there are about two to four or four to five very tightly packed coil like tube structures so they are called seminiferous tubules seminiferous tubules okay so how they they are like this they are very tightly packed tubes like this okay so like this they are present in each compartment so what is the use of the seminiferous tubules inside the seminiferous tubules only sperms are produced okay right right okay so let us go to the same picture here so now these are the seminiferous tubules these are the seminiferous tubules okay so like this in each compartment we have many seminiferous tubules okay so what happens here all the seminiferous tubules they produce these sperms they get collected and they open in an area this area is called reti testis okay so the first part so if you uh, name or label the testis okay so the first one inside is seminiferous tubule and second one is all the seminiferous tubules in in an area called reti testis this mesh like area okay and this reti testis see they ascend into a tube here they are uh, extending into a tube like structure and this tube is called vasa efferentiata okay this is the third structure and this vasa efferentiata continues into a tightly coiled very thick tube like structure this is called epididymis this is called epididymis okay so the epididymis exactly sits outside the testis okay and this epididymis continues over like this and it comes out finally you could uh, appreciate here the tightly packed coil like structure as it comes out of the testis they become only one tube so this tube is called vas difference this tube is called vas difference okay so this is the internal parts of the testis which starts 
from the seminiferous tubules and it ends in the vast difference it's a continuous tube but with different regions okay so this is the route how the sperms travels exactly and here this cross section when we cut this testis it will be like this here the outside there is a thin capsule which is made up of a fibrous tissue this capsule is called tunica albuginea tunica albuginea okay so this is the outer covering of the testis understand this picture we could appreciate both the side view and the frontal view of the male reproductive system okay so if you uh, clearly able to identify the parts in both the views it is very easy for you to remember each points for the exam point of view okay so let's go through this pictures together so the first one the outer covering the bag where the testes are present is called scrotum this is the first part okay the first one so here where the scrotum is present this is the scrotum right okay the second one inside the scrotum what is present testes there are a pair of testes on either side so these are the testes this is the second part okay and outside the testes we have a, a thick tube like structure this is called epididymis epididymis is the third structure here this is the epididymis this one okay see this vast difference it comes out of the testes okay now this is the structure so so far we have seen up to this structure so far we have seen up to this structure cross section okay so the vast difference is coming out and here this vast difference is coming out of the testes and where it uh, ends in ampulla and ejaculatory duct and finally it uh, joins with the urinary system as urethra okay and here this opening is called urethral meatus the broad last part of the opening is called urethral meatus and here the outside skin is called the, the corner skin of the penis is called gland penis okay here what is the use of this epididymis or the function of the epididymis sperms are produced inside the testes but the maturation of the sperm happens only in the epididymis you know sperms able to swim right so the swimming training for the sperm will be given in the epididymis okay so how to swim or uh, the further uh, maturation motility everything will be training will be given in this part okay so the epididymis is a single highly coiled tube that temporarily stores the spermatozoa once the sperms are produced they comes out from the testes they are stored in the epididymis also they undergo physiological maturation and they acquire increased motility and fertilizing capacity so complete fertilized uh, sperm means it is the sperm which comes across the epididymis okay so this is the importance of epididymis right so this part let's talk about this part the external outer layer of the penis is called gland penis so this is the male external genitalia it is made up of a special tissue that helps in the erection of the penis during the copulation okay then it is covered by a skin the uh, very thin skin is called foreskin so the enlarged end of the penis is called the gland penis and it is covered by a loose fold of skin called foreskin okay right so next one is how the cells of the seminiferous tubules will be so so far we have seen the male reproductive system and we know that where the sperms are produced the sperms are produced inside the seminiferous tubules so we have to study what are the cells present inside the seminiferous tubules okay each seminiferous tubules is lined by two types of these cells it is called male germ cell or spermatogonia and sertoli cells or nurse cells so two types of cells are present in each seminiferous tubules so for example see we have seen seminiferous tubules this is the seminiferous tubules no so tube means how it will be it will be like a, a double wall structure you know when you expand this how it will be it will be like this right right so 
if you take this area this area is a tube so on inside the walls of this seminiferous tubules there are many cells they are called the seminiferous tubule cells two types of cells are present in this wall that they are spermatogonia and nerve cells okay so the male germ cell that means the spermatogonia they undergo meiotic cell division and they produce the sperm so how the sperms are produced this we will study in the next uh, lesson that is called gametogenesis spermatogenesis in this topic we will study okay now we are studying just anatomy of the organs and then sertoli cells sertoli cells are called nurse cells they provide nutrition for the growing sperm cells okay so this is the picture given in the ncrt book how the inside structure of the seminiferous tubules will be there so see here this this is one uh, a group of tissue okay so where we could see spermatogonia spermatozoa sertoli cells like this okay so i will show you an another picture in which you could easily appreciate these cells in detail okay so look at this picture this is a testis this is the cross section of the testis when you do a cross section of the testis the cells will be like this a group of cells round round cells one these group of cells are only mentioned here uh, depicted here okay so let us see just one segment of this one here this is the extended view of this one segment so what is present in this a center part is having a cell called sertoli cell do you see this green color cell this is the sertoli cell so exactly the sertoli cell will be like this sertoli cell has a center nucleus okay so this is called nursing cell surrounding the sertoli cells there are different uh, levels of sperm cells will be there some will be mature cells some are growing cells some are baby cells like this you could see here primary spermatocytes secondary spermatocytes spermatids these are the different levels of sperm cells so what happen this sertoli cells they provide the nutrition for example in any part of the, our body if you see how the cells growing cells take energy they take directly energy nutrition from the blood supply but it is not so in the case of male reproductive organ in the testis in the sperm production only the sertoli cells they could able to provide the nutrition to the sperm cells okay that's why they are called nursing cells or nurse cells okay so that's why surrounding the sertoli cells there will be many sperm cells growing here okay so once they grow once grown spermatids they release out here this is the hollow area of the tube okay seminiferous tubules okay and they come out whatever produced everything comes out that that means the sperms comes out and they go to the other part collect and comes out through the vas deferens like this okay so if you see here this is the actual histological picture of a testis cross section okay you could see here this round round group of island of uh, uh, tissues okay so in this we have different types of cells the corner cells are called spermatogonia and spermatocytes spermatozoa like this different layers of uh, stages of cells will be there in a uh, testis cross section okay now and another type of cell is called legic cells you could see here legic cells this purple color one is called legic cells what is this legic cells they are interstitial cells interstitial cells means they are present in the interstitial spaces first we should know what is the interstitial spaces the space between two cells or two region is called interstitial space okay see here this is a one group of cells and this is one group of cell in between this space is called interstitial space here there are some purple color cells they are called legic cells okay so here if you see here see here this spaces uh this spaces this spaces like this in this spaces these are called interstitial spaces so in the interstitial spaces there are a special cells called legic cells so what is the use of the legic cells what is the function of this legic cells they produces the male sex hormone that is called androgen so this androgen is essential for male sexual characters so they are produced in the testis 
by the interstitial cells or the legit cells. Okay. Also, these androgens are essential for the maturation of the sperms. So, what happens? This uh, sertoli cells they take this uh, hormone and give to the growing sperm cell. Okay, understand? So here you see here in these areas, in these areas, these are called interstitial spaces. Here, legic cells are present. Here, the sperm production is occurring. Okay, so what happens? This hormone will be taken up by the Sertoli cells and they provide nutrition to the growing sperm cells. So, like this, the structures are present inside these seminiferal tubules. Okay, clear? Right. So, let us go to the male accessory glands. Not only the uh, testis, which is the primary male sex organ, we have accessory glands. So, what is gland? Gland means anything which produce something is called gland. Okay. So, hormone, enzymes or some nutritious substances, something it should produce. So, they are called glands. So, in the male reproductive system, we have three important glands. The first one is called seminal vesicle. This one is seminal vesicle. Right? Seminal vesicle. This one. And... The second one is called prostate. This one is the prostate gland. And third one is called bulbourethral gland. This part. So we have three glands in the main genital tract. Okay. So vesicle, prostate and bulbourethral gland. Bulbourethral gland is also called as corpus gland. So if you see the vesicle, seminal vesicle and bulbourethral gland are two. Each in one side. But the prostate gland is only one. So, what is the function of this gland? What they secrete? The seminal vesicle secretes an alkaline fluid called seminal plasma. Like how blood is having plasma? Liquid part like this. We have in the semen the liquid part. The liquid parts are produced by this gland. Okay. So, if you take semen. Semen carries sperms and also some liquid substances. So, those liquid substances are produced by this glands. That's why the semen is white in color. Why white? Because these glands produces the chemicals or the enzymes which are white in color. Okay, they are actually alkaline substances. Alkaline substances. Why semen is alkaline in nature? Because the female reproductive tract is acidic. So, when the sperm meets the uh, ovum in the reproductive tract, it should be neutralized. Otherwise, it gets killed in the acidic environment. Okay. So, to neutralize the acidic environment in the female tract, the semen which is produced is alkaline in nature. Okay. So, this liquid, the alkaline liquid is produced by the seminal vesicle. So, what it contains? It contains fructose sugar, ascorbic acid, prostaglandin, vesiculase enzyme, etc. which enhances the sperm mobility. So, why all the substances are needed? Because, see the sperm is, has been produced in the male sex organ. It has to reach the female sex organ. So, till that it has to be viable. Okay. And uh, when it enters the female reproductive tract, it has to survive until it meets the ovum. So, like this for its uh, transport, for its easy mobility to enhance the sp uh, sperm mobility. So, these uh, glucose, sucrose, all these substances are present in the semen. Okay. So, here, why fructose sugar is present? Because for every cell, it needs energy. Energy is provided by ATP. You know, it's from glucose. Okay. So, sperm also needs energy. It needs more energy actually because it swims. So, for the tail to move, it needs energy. That energy is provided by the fructose which is present in the semen. Okay. And it has prostaglandin. What is prostaglandin? The female reproductive tract, when the semen enters, sperm enters the female reproductive tract, it is an outside substance for the female tract, right? It is an antigen, a foreign substance. So, immediately the female reproductive system, uh, female immunity system, what it does, it produces antibodies and it could able to kill the sperm. So, in that condition, there is a no point uh, of reproduction right so to nullify this effect what happens the sperm the semen produces prostaglandin the semen contains prostaglandin so this prostaglandin it hides the semen from the female immune system 
understand then only it does its fertilization so these things happen so these are the usage of this seminal fluid also this bulbo urethral gland this helps in the lubrication of the penis during the copulation okay so let us see how the sperm travels finally so here in the uh, seminiferous tubules the sperms are produced and they are stored in the epididymis until it get mature okay after it get mature here it travels through this vast difference the long tubes and get stored in this region this is called ampulla ampulla is the region where the sperm get stored until it's ejaculated okay so if it is if it is ejaculated it comes out if it is not ejaculated the sperm cells will be killed and all its nutrients will be reabsorbed by the body okay so ampulla is the region where the sperm cell stored until it gets ejaculated then so when the sperm is ready for ejaculation during that time what happens these three glands they produces these structures what glands this prostate gland seminal gland and bulbo urethral gland they produces a white color liquid that is called semen which contains many chemicals and nutrients along with this the sperm is coming out as semen okay so finally semen comes out that's why semen is white in color because it is, it contains all the substances produced by these glands okay so let us see the composition of semen what semen contains actually if you see the percentage of semen just 5 percentage is only sperm baki 95 percentage carries this white color alkaline substance which is produced by seminal fluid prostate gland and bulbo urethral gland so what is present in this in this it has amino acids enzymes fructose phosphatase citric acid zinc galactose mucose etc so like this many chemicals why zinc is present okay because for example if you see this is the head of the sperm the head of the sperm carries the dna genetic material okay during transport that dna should not be damaged so to protect the dna the semen contains zinc so like this many nutritious protective enzymes chemicals everything are present in the semen semen contains just 5 percentage sperm baki 95 percentage the protective nutritious structures until it reaches and meets its ovum okay like this see how interesting the human reproductive system is okay so i hope you understand this lecture our next lecture will be female reproductive tract okay so if you like this lecture please don't forget to subscribe to our channel meet biology expert and post your comment and leave a thumbs up meet you in another lecture till then take care